Hello valued viewers, I hope you're doing very well. It's early 2024 and I'm actually going back over the last couple of years and looking at functions of the Hornet that I've missed. Today we're looking at the raid radar modes and especially how you might use them in combat. So we start with a real life anecdote. A few months ago I was commentating on the Thrustmaster BVR competition. I was speaking to my friend Bear and he was saying how he was training with a real fighter pilot and that fighter pilot told him about a real technique fighter pilots use to fool enemy radars. They do something called cell resing. That means flying in a formation deliberately close together, almost in parade formation. And as stupid as that sounds, that's a real life tactic. You do that so that to the hostile who's looking at you on his radar, you appear as just one target. And even if he does know there's more than one of you there, he just doesn't have the function on his radar to differentiate you and attack you individually. So, of course, you have countermeasures in radars to beat cell resing. In the Hornet, it's called Raid Modes. There are three Raid Modes in the Hornet. Our situation is we're in a Hornet and in front of us are a four ship of hostiles that are doing a cell res. Here they are. They're fairly close to each other. In this case, they're spread well within a one mile box. First, let's assign our TDC or make the radar soy sensor of interest with sensor control switch right. We start on our default radar mode, range while search. And just to refresh our memories of how this works, because I haven't looked at the Hornet in many years, this displays hostile aircraft as raw hits or bricks. They're called bricks because they look like a little brick there. Now, remember, there's four aircraft out there, but look how useless the radar is in differentiating them. You can sort of see that there's multiple out there, but you don't know how far spread they are. You can't tell the difference in altitude. You don't really know how many they are so how are you going to attack that if you don't know what they are the best use of raid mode is not within range while search but our other mode TWS track while scan known as twiz so let's switch over to twiz now let's just pause and refresh our memories of what twiz does no longer do we see raw hits or bricks instead twiz automatically converts those bricks to tracks a track stores more information on that target than a brick. As well as that, it automatically designates the most relevant of those tracks as our primary target, called an L and S, launch and steer, because it gives us launch and steer information. We know which one is launch and steer because it's got a little star symbol in it. And pause. Well, that's great, but I still can't do anything with it. I still don't know how many planes there are. It's pretty useless. So we need to do a raid. We can either press the raid switch up the top of the screen there, or, of course, we have a button for it on the HOTAS, that there. So let's press it. Pip. And that's much better. If I pause it, let's talk about what that's done. It's focused the energy of the TWIZ radar mode into a three-bar elevation. 10 nautical mile by 22 degree scan area. It's basically zoomed in the radar as well as the display for us. Note that the B sweep, which is this line here, is now focused on our primary target, our launch and steer, the closest guy. We know we're in raid mode. This one is actually called scan raid within TWIZ, and you know it says scan raid at the bottom. Well, that's much more useful because if I unpause now and I were to press, remember, once we're in TWIZ, we can press undesignate button here to cycle between different targets as our launch and steer. So press it, pip, that guy there. And each time you press it, you get information shown about that particular track. So uh, mark 0.2, 16,000 feet, mark 0.2, 16,000 feet. They're all the same because they're in formation. Well, this is useful now. We can do something with it. We know there's three, uh, sorry, four targets. We know they're in finger four formation. We know roughly uh, they're spread between them. We can individually target them if we want. Probably the major use for this is situational awareness. I can say, OK, Simba, there's four of them. You take contacts one and two on the left. I'll take contacts one and two on the right. We now know how to form an attack. Or it could be just for general surveillance, finding out how many aircraft are actually out there. And that's it. If I want to get out of the raid, I could uh, press the raid switch again. I could press raid up there. I could press reset. I could undesignate, but let's just press it up here and boop. Now that's genuinely useful. 
Next, we're going to look at the version from Range Wild Search via an STT track. So probably just to get us more talking time, let's reset. Right, off we go. Ping. Let's make it soy. Uh, we're in Range Wild Search by default. Let's go make one of those targets our STT, single target track. Obviously, to do that, you drive the TDC uh, left, right, up and down over to a target. I don't know which one I'm getting because obviously I haven't got the resolution, but I'll just go for that guy there. Press TDC, depress twice once twice we now have an stt with an stt we have a variant of the raid called raid sam raid situational awareness mode now we don't have a button up here anymore for some reason but we can press the hotas switch so ping now we're in raid sam here now this isn't quite as useful as the Quiz variant. What we do get is the radar. I'm just going to pause it. Focused in around the primary track again, which is the STT target here with the star on it. In this sub mode, we get two bars of elevation. We get 20 degrees of scan and a five by five nautical mile search area. The important difference between this and the Twiz variant is that we cannot see the other targets. What we can see is their respective altitudes, and this is where it gets a little bit confusing for me. But we can see that there's a guy roughly over here at 16,000 feet, and that's all we know about him. There's a guy roughly over here at 16,000 feet, and that's all we know about him. And there's a guy roughly over here at 16,000 feet, and that's all we know about him. And of course, we've got our single target track there. Unpause, I could press it again, and we're back to our normal display. Press it again, and obviously you can see Ray down the bottom there. Press it again, and we're back to normal. Press it again, and we're back on Ray, just to show that you can toggle it on and off. It takes a few seconds to update, and there it's back on. Okay, let's turn it off. There's one more Raid variant. If I went to Data Sub Menu here, we've got Raid One Look. If I press that there, see if you can spot the difference. On, off, on, off. If I turn it on, I can see my single target track, the star, but I can also see any raw hits or bricks around him. And you can see if you look very closely, some little bricks have appeared. Now that does have its uses, but the only thing to say is that with Raid 1 Look, it doesn't zoom in to the five mile area like Raid Sam does with an STT. It just has our normal 40 mile display. So although we can see those targets now superimposed over the STT, it doesn't help the fact that they're close together and we can't really separate them. But that's just a limitation of Raid 1 Look. If I turn that back off, out of data, I can now press uh, our raid again and go back to our raid SAM. So that is using the three raid modes in Twiz and Range While Search through STT, their benefits and their disadvantages. I hope that was useful and bye-bye.